Yeah, this thing, the other compressor's making popping noises. Turn this guy off. What the heck was that? This thing was popping. This video is brought to you by Sportland. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We have a call for a kitchen AC not working, and just from the history of this restaurant, I know the unit's gonna be dirty. I had another tech come out here the other day, and he very quickly just rinsed off the coils, but that doesn't work when we have almost no water pressure. Like, it literally, he can pee harder than what comes out of the hose, so. This is gonna be a long day. This is the water pressure I'm dealing with. Um, I brought my pressure washer with me today and all sorts of chemicals and we're going to open this guy up uh looks like we have a low pressure code too number 23. come over here we have a busted belt that indoor blower wheel is just hammered too but i can't really solve that right now we're gonna power down this unit and uh start cleaning and we'll get belts changed uh, i imagine all the other units are probably the same too so Side access as usual for easier access. Just real quick, just preliminarily give the condenser fan motors a spin, and this one's locked up. Definitely got a problem there too. All right, so the process is we start with a pre-rinse, okay? We're just getting the coil wet. What I, I, I have no scientific evidence to prove this, but I do it to kind of give a smooth surface for the coil cleaner. Um, get it from both sides, just get it wet. If that's any indication, those things are plugged solid. That's what the condensers are like inside. So I already wet this front and this inside. I just need to do this back inside right here. And the water pressure is horrendous. I know I've said that a bunch of times already, but so we're just saturating everything and then we'll get some coil cleaner on everything. I was able to get hot water though, so that's kind of cool. At least I can get it nice and warm. It's not so much grease as it is just buildup. Gonna use the brightener cleaner, condenser coil cleaner from Refrigeration Technologies. I know that this is going to take a long time and I know it's going to take a lot of passes of cleaner because of the low water pressure. That's why I use the whole or so much of it. Now I'm going to start on the lowest dilution ratio. I'm using the refrigeration technologies gun because I just want to let the cleaner do its work. So I'm going to put it on very lightly, let it sit and then repeat and repeat and repeat. Okay. Pressure washers can be very dangerous on these coils. You really have to pay attention to what you're doing and not flatten the fins. Um, this one has an angle fitting on it. I just got this thing from Home Depot, so I, I don't know what it's called, Clean Force or something. But, all right. Let's get in here and see what we can do. stop right there because on that inside one it's starting to bend the fence so no more pressure washer on that yeah you gotta watch out you get too close plus these fins are getting really old and they get just damaged really easily I ended up getting my little pump sprayer right here and spraying it on a little more concentrated to get some more foaming action going on um, just letting it sit for a minute, but we gotta be really careful because I sprayed it on super, super concentrated. So um, let it sit for a sec and then we're gonna give it a rinse and try to get some more of that gunk out of there.
uh, very satisfying to see this stuff come through. So this is the first uh, time I've used the Venom pack on this unit. And to be honest with you, the pressure washer is not even needed. The Venom pack is handling its business really well. Better than it ever has before, so yay for the Venom pack. Now, I did run it a little bit more concentrated, but it's working, it's kicking butt. Look at this, we're actually getting flow out of the condenser now. Even though it's low water pressure, it's actually coming out. So, I'm just doing a final rinse on this one right here to make sure we get nice and slow. Make sure we get all the uh, stuff, coil cleaner out of there because we don't want to leave any on there. So I did a wrench from the bottom up, and then now I'm doing a wrench from the top down, just making sure we're flushing all the cleaner. And you see all the stuff coming out of that condenser right now. See the difference. Now these filters are kind of messed up, but at least they're gonna let outside air into the building now. We'll get them some new ones, or we'll let them know. New condenser fan motor in. I'm gonna need to do something because the little chingus that holds the clip in that goes over the top is broken, so I'll have to zip tie it or tape it or something. But fan motor's in, got a good pitch. The blade's uh, centered where it's supposed to be. We're gonna fire this guy up and see how it operates. Well, that certainly doesn't sound good. The compressor itself sounds like dirt. We're gonna kill the power real quick. Wow, that sounded really bad. Uh, the contactor looks like it might be a little burnt. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get the whole measure quick setup going on and we're gonna test that contactor to make sure we have proper voltage going to that compressor and see if it's bad or if it's getting bad voltage or what. I went to put my suction probe on and freaking oil everywhere started leaking out. So this thing, that might be why this compressor was making funny noise. We might have had uh, oil get trapped in the evaporator or something. I don't know. All right, well I'm putting my probes on right now so we can do a startup test and see what's going down here. All right, I tested and it has proper voltage going to it. But we have uh, very low pressures. It is a R22 system. Low head pressure, low suction pressure. It could be low on charge. Um, let's look at the vitals. High superheat, almost non-existent subcooling. I wonder if we are uh, low on charge on that bad boy. Interesting. Hmm. I'm gonna try to add a little gas to it and see if that helps out the situation at all. We definitely have an oil return problem though, but as it runs, it calms down and doesn't make that horrid noise very much. Still doesn't sound the greatest though. Yeah, this thing, the other compressor's making popping noises. Turn this guy off, what the heck was that? This thing was popping. What the heck is going on here? Is the blower motor running in the right direction? There's no way we had a phase reversal, is there? What the heck is going on here? That scared the crap out of me. That compressor was straight popping and shaking the heck interesting interesting 
All right, so I pulled those two off because I want to check phase rotation, but check this out. I went to go pull this one off. This guy's all burnt. This wire coming in. We got something going on here. We've got voltage issues or something. Our power is turned off and yeah, man, look at this. This thing is crispy. Wow, what the heck is going on here? All right, so I put new leads on this. I had a compressor lead repair kit. Um, I'll tape them up and clean them up here in a minute, but I'm gonna put the cover back on and then uh, we're gonna test phase rotation. Because if you look at these, the phase rotation is different to compressors, so we need to make sure something's not wrong there. I tested phase rotation. The first stage compressor's running, new wire. We're good on that for the time being. I'll clean up the wires in a minute. But second stage was the one that started shaking, okay? Uh, but I did test phase rotation to these two compressors and it is correct. I used the field piece meter with the phase rotation test. Um, that is correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this guy back up, watch the system, and then we'll get on the, the second one here in a few minutes. I'm wondering if it's just an oil problem. I bet you we're low on charge and our oil's logged in the evaporator or something. Um, so I'm gonna get some refrigerant and add a little bit of refrigerant to it and see if we can bring the system vitals up and see if we can get some of that oil back to that guy. Because I know that that thing was foaming out of the suction port, so it probably just needs some gas coming back to push it back in. Um, again, I'll look at the second one here in a few minutes. All right, this is interesting. So the longer I let it run, I haven't added any gas yet. And the pressures are stabilizing out. So we must have just had oil logged and it's coming back to the compressor. So we're gonna let it operate for a little bit longer before I start playing with anything. Um, and see if it stabilizes even more. All right, so check this out. Um, my pressures are fluctuating a little bit. So what I did was I was accessing liquid line pressure right there, okay? So I went ahead and put a discharge line port on there. So this is discharge, discharge line pressure 254. Now what I want to show you, my liquid line pressure is 210. Map to high pressure. 212. We have a pretty high pressure drop across that condenser. Which makes me wonder if we have a restriction somewhere. I wouldn't expect to see that much of a pressure drop. That's substantial. So uh, we're gonna investigate that uh, liquid line dryer. And no, no temperature drop across the dryer. So um, it, the compressor is really loud. We know that we have oil in uh, you know, the rest of the system that isn't all the way back into the compressor. So it kind of needs to run to get that oil back into it. Uh, I'm definitely gonna talk to the customer about that compressor though. Um, I don't know that this unit's really worth putting all this money into. This is a, probably a 2004, 2005 Linux package, uh, 2007 according to the compressor. So uh, I'm gonna leave this one alone because it's half-ass decent and uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm gonna see if this thing's capable of working or what's going on with that second stage now all right i turned everything off i disconnected this one because it's so loud that way i can hear myself when this one's running we're going to connect this guy back Woo, doggy that thing is hot man okay so the first thing we're going to do is check voltage to make sure we're getting proper voltage so i'm going to do that right quick Um, let me ohm it out real quick. Nothing. 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 Yeah, we're off on overload. Yeah, nothing's grounded. All right, it's off on thermal overload. So um, it does have three phase power coming to it though. So that guy needs to cool off. I can't really use my compressor cooling tool on that because it'll, uh, it'll just soak everything in there and that's not good. 
I'm gonna have to leave that guy off and get the other two running and then come back another day, let it just cool off naturally. Good gosh, that one starts up rough. Yeah, I'm talking to the customer here. I'm gonna go ahead and just talk to them about these compressors. I don't think we're gonna come back. I'm gonna leave this one running, but the middle one I'm gonna leave disconnected. And uh, yeah, that's not good. Even if it's just oil, how long has it been running without it, you know? When I was taking off the, the gauges, the refrigerant smells almost burnt too. So that guy's done. Um, well, I shouldn't say it's done. I'll give the customer the option of coming back, but I'm gonna strongly urge that they consider replacement on this unit, considering we have two potential compressor issues. Um, I better jump onto the first stage and see how that one's operating too. And according to their charts right here, the first stage is low. So, uh, but the approach is low, that's weird. Let's go take a look at the TXV, see how that's operating. This dang thing keeps vibrating loose. All right, let's have a look at the TXV. TXV is covered in oil. Yeah, first stage TXV is covered in oil. That's weird. Let's power this guy down. And I'm gonna grab some soap bubbles. All right, got some big blue right here. You wanna spray it on to where you're not creating bubbles, you're just coating it. Get it all the way up in the distributor. Oh yeah, I can already see leaks. Look right here. So the distributor has a big fat leak all over it. It's on the back side too. It's bubbling everywhere. That's a nice refrigerant leak. Okay. So we're gonna top off the charge on the first stage, get them some gas in there, at least get them two compressors. Yeah, cause look at that indoor blower too. That indoor blower is caked. So yeah, this whole thing is just trashed. Okay. Um, Let's see, my sub cooling says it's high, but it's actually not because if I change over to the liquid line pressure, then it'll probably be on point. Yeah, right around 11 degrees sub cooling. So that's pretty good. Superheat's kind of okay, it's, it's maintaining. Um, we're still a little bit low on our suction and discharge targets, but now again, this is liquid line temp, but, um, or liquid line pressure, but I don't think it's gonna get too much better than that. The unit's operating. We're gonna leave the second one off third one I'm gonna leave it like it is right now uh, I'm afraid the thing's gonna take a crap if I do anything else to it it is so important that you do not just stop at the first issue that you find when you run into these restaurants okay and you also have to be you know that whole big picture diagnosis thing you got to look at the big picture and look at everything okay I, I triaged the unit, I found a bunch of issues, took it one by one and worked my way through them. We had to clean the condenser to go before we could go any further. The condenser had to be shiny clean. We had to change the condenser fan motor. We had to fix the belt on the blower assembly. Then from that point, we start diagnosing compressors, okay? Um, each compressor had an issue, right? The first one was still running, but it had burnt wires. The second one, uh, something was bad inside of it. I have a feeling in the third one, um, we saw the oil issues where it was low on oil and making a really loud noise. Now I went ahead or I have a feeling that that was caused because of the lack of maintenance for so long, um, a flooded start, kind of an issue, uh, the refrigerant migrating, it washed the oil out of the compressor and that was probably the noise and all those issues. Okay. Um, with this particular customer, this was back in September. Okay. Um, I just didn't post this video yet. We've actually already replaced this entire unit. Okay. I went to the customer with all these issues and I just told them like, good guys, you guys really need to consider replacing this unit. And they went ahead and had us replace it. So we put a brand new Linux. Uh, I think that's a 15 ton unit. Yeah. 15 ton unit on there. And, uh, it's been working fine ever since, but we still have to triage these units and go through the list. And I always, even if I think the unit's a piece of junk, I still go through it and then give the customer a big list. That whole big picture diagnosis thing, 
I always try to preach that and always try to follow that as much as possible, okay? So, a couple things. Yes, it was hot, okay? This, like I said, this was back in September. It was, we were going through a heat wave, and no, I didn't want to be on the roof all day long, but still, it, we just have to do our jobs, okay? So, went through it step by step. And also, I was there for like eight hours that day because I didn't show everything, but it, I, I had to rinse that condenser and reapply cleaner like three times. Rinse it, apply cleaner rinse it out and then keep doing it over and over and over again. And then I had to do the same for every other AC on that roof. Okay. I didn't show the filming of all the other ones just to save, you know, the, the video length basically. But yeah, I went through every AC and I gauged up on the other ACs too. The other ones just had loose belts, but other than that, they were okay. This being the kitchen is the one that they use right now. The restaurants aren't even open. So, you know, they don't even have customers in the building. So they don't even care about the dining room and the bar, but I still was, you know, went ahead and cleaned them and, and kept them to where they're operating properly. Um, but the kitchen was the main priority. Okay. So I always try to do my best and I'm not perfect. Okay. I, like I said, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to go through all this. Right. But still, I just had to bite my tongue and it's really easy when you, when you think, you know, they're going to change the unit or something like that to skip steps, but I, I can't, you know, we got to get them operational. Um, bottom line, I wanted to cool those cooks off. Those cooks have been working in crazy heat for a long time and we wanted to get them taken care of. Unfortunately, we're seeing more and more of this stuff because the restaurants here in California aren't operating. They're trying to save as much money as possible and the problems are just getting drug out, you know, that and they're not even that busy, but still, okay. I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end of this video. Please, if you haven't already, check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. Um, got merch available on there. It helps to support the channel. Uh, hats, beanies, uh, t-shirts. I have the original Big Picture Diagnosis shirt and then the flag design. So please check it out. Support the channel if you are interested. Um, if you're also interested in purchasing any tools, check out truetechtools.com. Uh, you can use my offer code big picture, one word. You can save 8% on your order. Definitely helps to support the channel because I get an affiliate commission from that. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, live streams on Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific, work permitting. And then I also go live on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel. There'll be a link in the show notes of this video. So thank you guys so very much, and we will catch you on the next one.